When you take your IELTS reading test, you'll complete a task called identifying information. More commonly, we call it true, false, not given. A lot of students struggle with this task, but by practicing and learning effective strategies, you will find it much easier to complete on test day. That's what we're going to do in this video. So settle in, because by the end of this video, you'll become much more confident at answering these questions. So here's a simplified text with a true, false, not giving question. Real IELTS reading passages, or texts, are a lot more detailed than this, but I'd like to talk you through the most important parts of a question like this. Before answering the question, let's quickly read the instructions. It says, are the following statements true, false, or not given, according to the information given in the passage? You can see that a statement would be true if it matches the information in the passage. False if it contradicts or says the opposite of the information in the passage. And finally, the statement is not given if there is no information about the statement or incomplete information about the statement in the passage. If you don't quite understand all that yet, that's okay. We'll work through these questions together. So let's read the passage. It's very small. Real IELTS reading texts will be a lot longer. It says, sunflowers are large yellow flowers that grow quickly. They are grown commercially for their seeds, which are used to produce sunflower oil. Okay, let's now look at the statements. Question one says, sunflowers are small flowers. But the passage says that they are large flowers. Question one is clearly false, as it contradicts the information in the text. It says something that doesn't agree with the passage. Question two is true. The information in the statement matches the information in the passage, although it uses different words. Sunflower oil is made from sunflower seed, means the same as seeds are used to produce sunflower oil. The statement in question three says that sunflowers turn to face the sun. This may or may not be true, but there is no information in the text about this. It is not given. If you find the phrase not given a bit confusing, think of it as it doesn't say. We don't know whether the statement in the question agrees with the text because the text does not say anything about it. If you are feeling like you need a little more practice, remember we have lots of IELTS practice questions on each reading task at E2. Sign up for free at e2testprep.com. Now, I do quickly want to mention before we continue that in the IELTS reading test, there is another task called identifying writer's views or claims. In this task, rather than choosing true, false, or not given, you choose yes, no, or not given. This is because in the true, false, not given questions, the reading text or passage is presented as fact, whereas in the yes, no, not given questions, the reading passage is presented as a writer's opinion. So we use the words true and false when discussing facts, and yes and no when agreeing or disagreeing with opinions. Although these question types are slightly different, you should still use the same techniques for deciding if the answer is true or yes, false or no, or not given. Here are some strategies I recommend for this task. First, underline keywords. Identifying the information that you are looking for will help you to find it. The action of underlining or highlighting will help you to focus. Next, remember that the answers will be in order. This is important. With information identification or true, false, not given questions, the answers are always in order. The answer to question five will always be found in the text after the answer to question four and before question six. If you cannot find the answer to question five between the answers to question four and six, it is very likely not there. That is, the text doesn't say, and so the answer is not given. Use this information to help guide you through the task. Here's another strategy. Look for synonyms and parallel expressions. 
Nearly always the information in the text, which matches the information in the question, will be expressed using slightly different words. We'll look at some of the examples of synonyms and parallel expressions shortly. Next, use only information in the passage. Remember that this is a reading test, not a knowledge test. If you have outside knowledge about a particular topic, it is not necessarily going to help you. Your answer to yes, no, not given, or true, false, not given questions must be based on material that appears in the reading passage. Remember that earlier question about sunflowers turning to face the sun. You might know that information from your daily life, but if it doesn't state it in the passage, you cannot mark it as true. Finally, leave no gaps. If you can't figure out the answer in the time available, take a guess. There is a one in three chance that you will be correct, and one more correct answer can be enough to give you a higher band score. Now, as I mentioned before, I'd like to quickly go into a bit more detail about this strategy here. Look for synonyms and parallel expressions. Understanding synonyms really is the key to answering these questions. Synonyms are words that have similar meanings. Synonyms can be nouns like sea and ocean. They can be verbs like purchase and buy. Adjectives often have a number of synonyms, such as hard, challenging, tough, and difficult. Adverbs such as quickly, fast, and rapidly are synonyms. These are single words that have very similar meanings to other single words. Parallel expressions, also known as synonymous phrases, are groups of words that express similar ideas but use different language. They can be a simple adjective-noun combination like vast sea or expansive ocean, or they may be more complex phrases with similar meanings, such as experienced a rapid increase or grew swiftly. Parallel expressions can also be whole sentences. For example, deforestation leads to loss of habitat. And cutting down trees reduces places for animals to live. IELTS reading tests your ability to understand written language and to recognize information expressed in different ways. Synonyms and parallel expressions are at the heart of this. They are what you need to be able to identify in order to correctly answer the questions. Let's practice. Here is a short passage with some true false not given questions. Look through the passage for synonyms and parallel expressions to help you answer the questions. Feel free to pause the video now and try answering for yourself. All right, let's have a look at the answers. So these are the keywords in the statements. Let's see if we can find synonyms or parallel expressions in the passage. Here they are. There appears to be a synonymous phrase for each of the key words that we identified in the questions. Widespread is a synonym of common. The statement in question four says, moa are common throughout New Zealand. In the passage, it describes the moa as a large bird once widespread in New Zealand. The important word here is once. The moa was once widespread. It used to be widespread, but it's not now. Once widespread contradicts are common. So the answer is false. See how we need to be careful. We cannot assume that synonyms indicate that statements are in agreement. They are just as likely to be contradictory. We need to check the words around the synonyms and parallel expressions. We can also see the word alongside in the second sentence. That's a synonym of adjacent. Let's check the context. Did the dodo live alongside the moa? No, it is often listed alongside the dodo as a candidate for de-extinction. Again, the answer is false. There is a synonym employed, but it is used with a different verb, listed rather than lived. See how this is working? 
The synonyms and parallel expressions show us where to look for the answers. However, it is not as straightforward as drawing a line between two words with similar meanings. Once we have located the synonym, we need to read around it to check whether the meaning is the same or a contradiction. Does the information match or not? It is not enough to recognize synonyms. We need to understand how they are being used in the passage. Let's look at the next one. Question six. Significant amounts of dodo bones have been found. Can you see the parallel expression for significant amounts? There it is, substantial quantities. That must be the answer to the question. Let's read the surrounding context carefully. Substantial quantities of moa remains exist. Aha, moa remains are not the same as dodo remains or dodo bones. Again, we have located a parallel expression, but it relates to a different species. The moa rather than the dodo. So the answer can't be true. Does the passage say anything about the dodo remains or dodo bones? No, it doesn't mention dodos in this context at all. It doesn't say, so it's not given. Now, if we can find the answer to question seven, and there is no reference to dodo bones before that, we can confirm that the answer to question six is not given. If the information was in the passage, it would have been found between the information that answers question five and the information that answers question seven. Remember, the answers to these questions can always be found in order. Let's look for the information to answer question seven. Japanese scientists have removed genetic material. Notice how the word Japanese stands out, because as a nationality, it has a capital letter. Names of places and people and dates tend to stand out from the text and are helpful signposts that can guide us to relevant information. The statement in question seven is, Japanese scientists have removed genetic material. Geneticists are scientists, and although expressed differently grammatically, extraction has the same meaning as removed, and genetic material is a synonym of DNA. In this case, the matching synonyms are used to express matching information. The two statements agree, so the answer is true. Great, I think you're getting the hang of this. Let's look at one more practice task together. Remember, if you want more IELTS reading practice, like true, false, not given, sign up for free at e2testprep.com. Here we go. Let's read the questions first. Scurvy is a mild condition caused by a lack of vitamin C. Animal metabolisms can produce vitamin C. Limes and lemons are a very good source of vitamin C. A poor diet always causes scurvy. Now that we've read through the text, we need to find the answers to the questions. Feel free to pause the video so you can read through the text. How did you go? Let's look at the questions one at a time in order. First, question eight. Scurvy is a mild condition caused by a lack of vitamin C. The text says that scurvy is a severe vitamin deficiency. Vitamin C deficiency means the same as lack of vitamin C. We have a parallel expression. But look carefully. Are severe and mild synonyms? No, they're opposites. The statement in the question contradicts the text, so the answer is false. Let's look at the next question. Number nine. Animal metabolisms can produce vitamin C. Does the text agree with the statement? Well, not exactly. The text says that unlike most other animals, humans can't make vitamin C within their own bodies. Let's think about what is implied by that statement. Humans can't make vitamin C, which is unlike other animals. That implies that animals can make vitamin C with their bodies. Another way to describe that is to say that animal metabolisms can make vitamin C. Metabolism means the chemical processes which take place within a living being. Humans can't manufacture vitamin C chemically in their bodies, but most animals can. 
Therefore, the two statements agree, and the answer to question 9 is therefore true. Sometimes we need to analyze the logic of a sentence structure in this way to decide whether a statement is true or false. It is really important to look carefully at the whole sentence, and sometimes even the sentence that comes before that, or even after that, where you find the synonym, in order to determine where statements agree or contradict each other. Let's move on to question 10. The statement says, limes and lemons are a very good source of vitamin C. Can we find any reference in the text to limes and lemons as a source of vitamin C? The text states that we have to get vitamin C from the foods that we eat, and that vitamin C is found mainly in fruits and vegetables, and then goes on to talk about supplements and smoking. Is there any mention of limes and lemons? It mentions fruits and vegetables, but not limes and lemons specifically as good sources of vitamin C. Now, you might know from your general knowledge that citrus fruit, such as limes and lemons, are a good source of vitamin C. However, it doesn't say this in the text. That information is not given in the text. We know it to be a true fact, but it is not stated in the text, so the answer is not given. This is something we have to be careful with. Use only information from the passage. Let's move on to the last question. Keep in mind that the information in the text always appears in the same order as the questions. So we only need to look for the information in the last sentence in this extract. Question 11 states that a poor diet always causes scurvy. Now, does that agree completely with what is written in the text? In the text, it says, people who don't eat well aren't necessarily at a higher risk for scurvy. We can safely say that a poor diet has the same meaning as people who don't eat well. That is quite clear. But what does aren't necessarily at a higher risk mean? Does it mean the same as always causes? No, it means sometimes causes scurvy, but not necessarily always. So, the statement in question 11 contradicts the information in the text, so the answer here is false. Okay, while this is a shorter reading passage than what you will encounter in an IELTS reading test, these examples are a good indication of the way that information will be presented in the text using different language than in the statements in the true, false, not given questions. Remember to look for synonyms and parallel expressions, and be sure to look at the context around these phrases. Let's quickly look again at the strategies and tips that we mentioned at the start of this video. These will help you in efficiently and effectively identifying the information you need in order to answer this type of question. Underline keywords. The answers will be in order. Look for synonyms and parallel expressions. Use only information in the passage leave no gaps. That's all for today, but before we go, I just wanted to point out that the examples that we've used today are simplified. They're a little bit easier, a little bit lighter, in order to introduce the techniques that you will want to use on test day. On test day, you might find that the answers to the true, false, not given, or yes, no, not given questions, are going to be in longer pieces of text, longer sentences, possibly even across two sentences. So this is really important that you build strong reading habits so that it's easier for you to read these sentences and determine if the information matches or not. Uh, and also it's very important that you practice with high quality practice materials like the kind we have here at e2testprep.com.